Hello, this is the third session of the Anonymous Melodical Method. Today I will talk about freezing and what I found fascinating about the evolution of the melodica. Freezing. I get a lot of messages from people asking me questions about freezing. As long as you play this instrument, this is an issue you cannot avoid facing. My friends who play the trumpet, the tuba, the euphonium, the trombone, and even the sousaphone tell me how can it so hard to breathe while playing the melodica. And the best melodial mess have been manufacturing error. Unlike the trumpet, when playing this instrument, there is no resistance of air against your mouth. This means all the air you blow out is used. And unfortunately, this instrument is evolving to become longer with more keys. For me, those instruments feel very heavy. I feel beauty in smaller keyboards, which is why I use a 22 keys model. Now, even as a Japanese person, I'm pretty skinny at 161 cm and 42 kg. My body is an ideal as a wind player. This is due to my family's genes. However, everyone who has heard me from comments your lungs are built like a machine or once you open fastener behind your back, a large old man will come out. What I am about to talk about is most likely unimportant for those who have a body suited to play wind instruments. Most people who cannot breathe out air cannot suck in air. Teacher, I can breathe long enough. After you sigh, if you open your mouth, air will automatically flow in. <laughs> but when nervous, some people forget to breathe in air. First, analyze where you need to breathe. Are you going to gradually breathe in air four bars before you need to or sharply in the 0 0.01 second you have when you need to? Are you going to breathe in through the nose, the mouth, or from both? Where are we use for the air you breathe in? In your cheeks, between your brows, in your stomach, or in your back? Or you obviously can't just store it in the cloud. Also, you can't store it for a long period of time. Now, let's start sorting through these questions. Such a reason is not necessary, but if you can, you will have more ways of expressing your music. Teacher, do I need to able to circle a breeze? The answer to that is, even if you can't, you can still perform music. However, if you can, you will gain more ways to express yourself. The method of circular breathing is simple. Breath in air to explore in your cheeks and in your body. But don't breathe in so much air that you can't breathe in any more air. Using the muscles in your cheeks, gradually push out the air in your cheeks. Before you use up all the air in your cheeks, breathe in air from the nose at the same time. Store the air you breathe in from the nose in your lungs. Move the air stored in the lungs to your cheeks. Repeat all these steps at a fast rate. This is all you need to do. Simple, right? There are many ways to do it, and this is not the only correct way. Most likely, many people will be surprised by how all the air in your cheeks gets used in an instant. Training your cheek muscle is important. Also, for instruments with long level variation like the bass melodica, you can breathe during the level variation, making it easier to breathe. Please go check out some videos by Dallin Barnard, a person I greatly respect. Imagine breathing the way you express words. There is color in breathing. That is your personality itself. Can you breathe like you are whistling while playing the melodica?
Is that whistling sound the same as the sound you imagine in your music? Japanese only has five vowels. Only a, e, i, o, u. We mix these five vowels and consonants. What sort of vowels and consonants exist in the country you live in? Are there unique vowels or consonants that don't exist in other countries? If your ears can pick up those unique vowels and consonants, you can expand the sound you make with your melodica, so literally that is. While I was living in Germany, I heard a lot of strong and enunciated consonants such as Glühwein, Dunkelbier, or Schlichtersteinheger. Disregarding whether I can pronounce those words well, it is important whether your ears know the consonants like these. The word in your mind is directly linked to the color of the phrase you take. I have attached a link to a video where you can learn more about the color of breathing. Many breathing methods are important, however, what's more important is how healthy your body is. I'm always worried and thinking about breathing, such as even with a smaller body than that person, how can I get better than them? I have read a lot of books regarding breathing techniques, such as the uh, Alexander Technique. In the books I've read, there were some that were more spiritual and belief-oriented, similar to the Bible or other religious and cult-oriented books. However, playing this instrument for 17 years, between the age of 16 and 33, there is something I have come to realize. That is, activities such as taking short walk or running around and eating properly is the most effective method of improving. Surprise! After playing this instrument for 17 years, the conclusion I've reached is eating properly and exercising a good amount. But this is the actual truth. The secret behind how I have gained steel like lungs is kickboxing and protein. But we warn, regardless of how much you play an instrument just because you use your air, doesn't mean you will become healthy. Future evolution of the melodica. Previously, I have mentioned how I like the melodica because of how young and undeveloped it is. Check out Melodica Method 1 and 2 for more about it. When selling the Melodica, Japanese Melodica makers advertise the Melodica as the following. Light and easy to travel with. This is a lie. Just press the key and get the correct pitch. This is a lie as well. Japan invented the Melodica and this is a lie as well. Now, the melodica is an instrument that has gone through many interesting evolutions. Back in the day, with the concept of what a pocket accordion was to an accordionist, it was designed by the French who focused on aesthetics and built by the Italians using their highly advanced technical skills and technology. In Germany, they were manufactured by Horner, who named the instrument the melodica. In Japan, it was mass produced as an educational instrument, some of which were exported into Indonesia, Cambodia, and the other Southeast Asian countries. In recent years, China has started producing these instruments at a low price, which is exported and sold worldwide. The vintage melodicas produced in Eastern Europe and Russia have beautiful sound and are traded at a very high prices in the world of toy music. In South America, the instrument evolved in the world of reggae music thanks to Augustus Pablo. In the US, it was is used by jazz specialists and in the UK, the instrument was beloved by the Beatles. 
apologies to the people from the countries I did not list. I am not aware of how the instrument has evolved in every country. I would love to learn more about how the melodica has evolved in different countries. So please let me know about your country in the comment below. In other words, the manufacturing evolution and musical evolution are both happening worldwide at the same time. It's safe to believe that not many other instruments are evolved in this unique way. I always think of it this way. The research of melodica cannot be completed by one person alone. People from different countries must come together, cooperate, and create the future that comes 100 or even 200 years later. There is another interesting thing about the melodica that I have forgotten to share about. It's an instrument that can evolve during a time like this where YouTube can connect people from around the world to my melodica holic friends around the world. Thank you very much for helping me and stimulating me with all your melodicas. Thank you very much for watching.